but this youtube link it is not showing actually that thing it is only showing these things so, uh, it is now it is now showing okay okay this one should be muted fine only youtube one should be muted correct yeah fine okay uh, so good afternoon or you can say good evening all of you uh, this is professor pankaj vishwas i am the uh, uh, course instructor or you can say course coordinator of welding application technology uh, so, so today uh, now i am live if you have any queries uh, any clarification till date whatever the portion we covered you can ask me yes someone already said good evening uh, dr vishwas yeah you can ask your query if you have any queries yes yes i am in yes i am in online okay. so one of the student ask me a questions just i am reading this questions what he ask one minute uh, yes he ask me <coughs> the learner please uh post your queries okay yeah, this is uh, from our side we provided these things so if you have any queries you can ask me i think uh yes one question uh, asked by a student what is what do you mean by flat weld size is the leg length or throat thickness generally it's a very good question generally uh, leg length is considered as uh, what it's called uh, flat weld size what i am telling understand so if you provide uh, both the things leg length as well as throat thickness you know there is a relationship between leg length and throat thickness so both the things you can provide or only leg length also you can provide okay in question 5 and question 10 answer for length of the fillet weld are given without adding additional 15 mm to determine the uh, length should not we add 15 mm yeah definitely you should whatever the procedure i provided in my lecture you should add all these things after after adding all these uh, things if if it is provided in lecture that which 15 mm is required to add you need to add it otherwise not required to according to the lecture notes you should follow the solution what i am telling understand yes any other queries if you have you can ask me hello yes uh, yes yes De arindam yeah yes. definitely you can yes. ask me yes actually uh, while going to the assignment ha. there is a question ha in which the the answer is coming out to 25.29 mm 25.29 mm okay 29. fine now yes. in the options there is given 25.29 and 40.25 40.58 sir 5 okay okay fine so if Haan. if i add 15 mm to 25 it should be 40.29 and not 40.58 so i am confused which option to select okay leg okay length that or 15 mm i have to add actually that i'll actually uh, leg length size of the well should be leg length No, this is again? not related to leg length this is that additional 15 mm to be added for start and stop that okay. whether we should okay. add it or not add it this i will i will definitely clarify from our ta okay this uh, assignment generally have been done by one of my ta uh, okay, okay. group of ta 
definitely i'll clarify it and i will uh, i'll definitely yeah, accordingly yeah. will provide you the so, details so so okay. i am what if i select 25.29 yeah. no that is wrong can, can you please tell us uh, tell me your uh, phone number i will directly eight, tell yeah, my yeah. Head, yeah, yeah, yeah tell uh, eight, you to eight, yeah yes. 80 80 170 170 जेनरली फॉर इफ दंसर इज आस्क वॉट शुड बी द uh size of the weld generally there you need not need to uh, consider the leg length if you will provide leg length as well as what it's called uh, uh throat thickness both the things is also correct what i am telling understand so if the throat thickness option is not there you should always mainly consider yeah, leg length is the size of the weld okay yeah, same so question is asked This I will definitely. This question number uh, four and question number five and question number ten. These are the things I will clarify. Okay. Yes, yeah, someone is typing. I will. I will definitely clarify this thing, and accordingly we will provide you the marks. या so here one questions uh, is asked by one of the candidate uh, he asked me a question related to residual stress that related thing little bit i am just discussing now here you can see what he ask he ask me that sir uh, why the residual stress increase if the uh, what it's called uh, if the yield stress increase or if the thermal expansion coefficient increase then why the residual stress is increase and someone also ask if the thermal conductivity increase then why the residual stress increase uh, decrease uh, that related thing little bit i am uh, discussing now so one of the question asked by one of the candidate so here you see always you should keep it in mind what do we mean by stress little bit here i am discussing you can see so i am sharing my slide that will be better so after that i will discuss uh, so i am sharing the things one minute on me sharing this thing the sharing option till better i'll uh, there i'll discuss because
sharing my window actually. But window is not visible. One minute. Yes, the sharing option now came. So I'm sharing my window. Then I'll discuss this thing. That will be better. So here, so here I have to share, to share my, my window. window. Yes. Here I want to close that. Hello. Hello. Am I, Am I audible? Yes. Hello. 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 Why it is equal? Yes, you are audible. But here, 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 it is equal. Now I think it. It is audible. OK, fine. So one of the student asks uh, that uh, again echoing. OK, uh, I need to mute my. OK. Now is it okay? Okay, now it is okay. Now it is not equaling. Okay. Now then, then I am sharing my screen. This okay, fine. So you know that uh, uh, stress sigma is. You, all of you are very well familiar. Stress is equal to. Uh, E into epsilon. That means a stress is equal to you can see Young modulus and a strain. It's very well familiar to all of you. Now one of the student asked me, sir, if the thermal expansion coefficient alpha increase, then why residual stress this stress increase? Another student also asked, uh, same student asked, why if the thermal conductivity that means uh, K is increase, then this stress is decrease because this question uh, raised by uh, one candidate. So I am just explain these things very clear way, then it will be very clear to you. Now you know these things. So stress is equal to your Young modulus E into uh, epsilon is called a strain. This is called a strain. This is a strain and this is a stress. Now what you can observe here that this strain epsilon also you can write as 
change of length delta l by its original length that things you you are uh, very well familiar now this change of length whatever the change of length you know delta l this is dependent one what so you can say that if the change of length more so from this equation what you got from this equation you got stress is directly proportional to strain that you can say till elastic limit or uh, you can say till uh, uh, elastic limit i am just showing here because residual stress is depends on uh, elastic strain only that is also very well familiar to you now this change of length so you can say so as epsilon is proportional to change of length so you can write stress is also change proportional to change of length delta l correct now this change of length delta l is also depends on thermal expansion coefficient and change of temperature that things is very well familiar this change of length is how we can write change of length generally if a body is subjected to some temperature rise then how much expansion of that body or change of length is taken place how we can calculate this thing so change of length you can write as alpha into delta t delta t is the change of so here delta t is equal to your change of temperature change of temperature correct this things is very well known to you so you can say that change of length is also directly proportional to change of length is also directly proportional to epsilon epsilon means thermal expansion coefficient this is called thermal expansion coefficient thermal expansion coefficient okay now from here itself you can get a idea so stress is directly proportional to you can say stress is directly proportional to thermal expansion coefficient now if thermal expansion coefficient of a material is that means if, it, uh, if the thermal expansion coefficient of a material is more then what will be the things your stress also will be more definitely your stress also will be more this is on question raised by one student now another question is asked by uh, on the, the, by that that's the, the same is same student or same candidate that if the thermal conductivity increase then why this residual stress sigma decrease so that 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 things i am going to explain now now you know that from fourier, fourier heat conduction equation what is fourier heat conduction equation told fourier heat conduction equation told that for one dimensional case i am just showing k del 2 t by del x square is equal to we can say rho c del t by del t this is tangent fourier heat conduction equation for one dimensional case this is very well known to you now from this equation itself you can get that del 2 t by del x square is equal to rho c divided by k correct so del t by del t this way you can write now from this equation itself you can write this temperature this t is called temperature this is called temperature now from this equation you can see once you get the temperature temperature is directly proportional to you can say rho c by k that way you can write the solution is, if you will get from here itself it, you can get a idea this temperature rise is directly proportional to rho means density of the material c means a specific heat and k means thermal conductivity this k is called thermal conductivity thermal conductivity okay so one things you can observe that for a particular heat input for a particular heat input if this thermal conductivity increase then your temperature will be hot your temperature rise will be decrease so you can say higher the thermal conductivity lower the temperature rise that you can say because thermal conductivity more means heat can easily dissipate heat can easily dissipate correct so that's why what happens if thermal conductivity of a material is more then your temperature rise is less so if temperature rise is less then we know change of length is equal to your thermal expansion coefficient into temperature rise delta t delta t correct so this 
change of length change of the if temperature rises decrease then your delta l also will decrease so if delta l will decrease then your epsilon also will decrease if epsilon will decrease then what we know if epsilon will decrease then your s stage also will decrease because this s stage is directly proportional to s stage is directly proportional to s stage so if s stage decrease then your s stage also decrease i think you got the idea so why uh, thermal conductivity if a material thunder thermal conductivity if it is more then why the what it's called uh residual stress development in that material is less because of this thing because here if the thermal conductivity of that material more then heat rises for a particular heat input heat rises less what i mean heat rises less means heat is conducted uh, throughout the plate due to this conduction what happens heat rises less due to this less less rise of heat uh, less rise of temperature will be there now we know this change of length is directly proportional to rise of temperature so if the temperature rise will be less then your delta l will be less if delta l will be less your s strain will be less if s strain will be less your s stress also will be less i think you got the idea okay why it is coming like this so another candidate already ask another questions he ask <coughs> that sir uh, by using this stress relaxation method how how this equation is coming that means some equation is given there how this equation is coming can you please explain little bit clearly though i explain that things in my lecture details then also as he as he ask that's why again i am just uh deriving that equation he asked that, that uh, he asked me that why this sigma x is equal to minus some e by 1 minus poisson's ratio square into epsilon x plus mu into epsilon y how it is coming and why this negative things is coming that things he asked and why again he also ask me why this sigma y is equal to minus e by 1 minus mu a square epsilon y plus mu into epsilon x this this question is asked by one candidate so i will definitely discuss these things in details let's see any other questions are there or not yes if you have any questions you can directly put in chat box of uh, what it's called uh, yeah. youtube channel uh, so from there uh, uh, directly i can clarify your what it's called doubt you can directly uh, provide your chat in youtube uh, link not in what it's called uh, team link that will be better if you have any queries anything in your mind you can ask me yes this 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 the assignment related things definitely i will clarify everything i will discuss in details so one question uh, is uh, written by one student in assignment 5 question number 10 who is residual stress measurement technique can measure the stress at interior to the weld specimen after following the lecture for various stress measurement technique i had selected default drilling technique definitely your technique is correct but it is marked wrong and correct answer located garnet drilling in tech this is also another technique both the techniques is applicable there so uh, uh, definitely i'll clarify all these things and accordingly because this question is made by uh, my ta so i will just definitely uh, Uh, what it's called provide you the uh, means corrected marks thank you so much for your clarification right now i am just what it's called calling that uh, ta if he is available near to me okay i will give you the detail marks you need not to worry about this thing on to question i think he make make little bit confusing i will tell you so both the techniques okay. is applicable for 
both the techniques uh, are applicable for you can say measuring the uh, 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 residual state through the thickness what i'm telling under both default drilling technique as well as uh, this garnet drilling technique both the techniques so i think he provided both the option i'm just calling let's see okay sir yeah so we'll provide you the you need not to worry about this thing so the the a uh, question yeah so harindam is uh, writing some uh, typing something harindam you can uh, directly tell me also ask me why right? you need not worry about harindam you can unmute yourself and you can ask me because typing is a uh, very difficult task you can directly ask me why right? yes yes that is the thing only from team yeah okay now, but a yeah, team window why i am sharing because i need to explain something okay sir please see if there are marks can be allotted to me okay marks will be allotted in them definitely onil bola okay so you see also one question is asked how this equation is coming this my x is equal to e by 1 minus mu square epsilon x plus mu into uh, epsilon y okay so these things i am going to discuss now little bit elaborately i will discuss uh, let us consider generally for uh, what it's called for stress measurement techniques we use some strain gauge correct some strain gauge we use let us call this is on strain gauge along x this will give you let's epsilon x and this strain gauge whatever the strain it's measure this will give you epsilon y okay now by this two you can say what two strain measurement and let's another strain gauge is also there by this let's another strain value you measured that is uh, for a, for a another angle let's epsilon theta some another angle is there by this you measure another strain now i am going to discuss by using this strain reading how this sigma x and sigma y is coming that i am going to discuss now you know these things that means epsilon x epsilon x generally you can say epsilon x is equal to sigma x by e minus mu into sigma y by e how it is coming is it required to discuss i think not required because if i'll go to discuss all these thing it will take lot of time because generally we know this epsilon x is sigma x by e because you know how this thing is coming let us consider this is a bar let us consider this is a bar if this bar is subjected to some load then what happens let's let us consider it's elongate like so so i am showing a little bit other way then it will be more clear to you one minute so if you just apply load here then what happens you know this will elongate like this due to this application of force let's p okay now you know that in one direction the length is increase this is delta l length is increase in another direction generally you can say your diameter or you can say your cross sectional width is decrease initially let's the width of capital d after uh, elongation let's the width become a small d correct so you know that once a body subjected to some uh, force in a particular direction you know that things in that body there can be uh, one is uh, its uh, longitudinal uh, deformation and as well as in longitudinal direction if it is if the load is tensile in nature in long longitudinal direction your length will increase 
but in other direction like transverse direction your length will decrease that things is very well known to you correct so that things so that related so based on this thing generally this epsilon x x coming as sigma x by e minus mu into sigma y by e now if the body so here unidirectional case i have shown let's a cubic body is there a cubic body or bidirectional body is there which is subjected to a force sigma x in one direction and sigma y in another direction so what happens so this sigma x will provide you epsilon x what i am telling understand and this epsilon x that means along epsilon direction this epsilon x magnitude will be little bit decrease due to the application of load in other direction what i am telling understand so this actual resultant epsilon x along the direction of resultant epsilon x direction generally the load will be sigma x by e and this sigma y will be try to shorten the length along the x direction shorten along the x direction that you can represent by mu into sigma y by e that is very well known to you correct so that way generally it is coming epsilon x is this thing now similarly epsilon y you can write as sigma y by e and the uh, sigma x component will try to it sigma x component will try to uh, arrest or resist the elongation along y direction that's why there will come mu into sigma x by e this two equation is very well known to you so i am not going further more detail to discuss about all this thing so to solve this equation generally you can get this final resultant equation whatever the things you have seen in your uh, lecture note like how little bit i am explaining so here generally i am multiplying in second equation by mu both side so after that generally what i am doing after that i am just adding this two what i will get epsilon x plus mu into epsilon y this will be equal to you can say this will be cancel out sigma x by e minus mu a square sigma x by e correct this things you are getting now i am taking common sigma x by e what i will get 1 minus mu a square is equal to you can say epsilon x plus mu into epsilon y so from here itself you can get sigma x is equal to epsilon x plus mu into epsilon y divided by what you are getting divided by general e divided by 1 minus mu a square correct so the equation which here i am showing it is similar to this first equation except there is a negative sign correct there is a negative sign why this negative sign is coming why this negative sign is coming that you should know negative sign is coming generally you see this is generally you see always you should keep it in mind uh, what we by stern gauge what we used to do what we used to do generally residual stress is locked in stress locked in stress means locked in stress means what happens initially your bar was like this let's a bar is like this so it is subjected to some expansion it is subjected to let's it subjected to some expansion after expanding it's arrested by some surrounding thing it arrested by some surrounding things that means after expansion it is not return back to its original position what i am telling understand so at that time whatever the stress will be that stress is called residual stress that stress is called residual stress but by using strain gauge what we used to do so so you see what we used to do we generally insert the strain gauge in this plate in, we insert the strain gauge in this plate so what we used to do we release this strain we release this strain in the sense we generally remove this support this support we remove then once we remove this support this material return back to 
what happens then your strain gauge will compress your strain gauge will compress if the stress is tensile in nature then what happens then your strain gauge will compress that means your strain gauge reading will be opposite opposite in the sense let's initially due to the expansion your your bar was expanded like this so inside your body if it is restricted condition if your uh, in your body your stress will be tensile in nature correct so your stress is tensile in nature but once you release these things once you release this support then what happen it's return back to its original position so your bar will be contract due to this contract contraction whatever the strain gauge will be there that strain gauge will also contract because this is pasted generally over the surface of the body so that that's why what happens that things also will contract so if it is contract then what happens it will give what types of strain so due to this contraction it will give give your uh, you can say negative types of strain negative types of strain so actually what happens in your body due to residual stress your strain was positive positive but what happens your reading whatever the reading you are getting by your strain gauge that reading you give you negative things why negative things because once you release it it is contracting opposite things opposite reading you are getting that's why what happens whatever the reading you will get from the strain gauge so after final calculation you see this is the final calculation with this calculation generally what you need to do with this calculation you need to apply a negative sign then only you will get what are the actual residual stress there what are the actual residual stress there in your body i think now it is very clear to you i think now it is very clear to you. that's why that's why what happens your sigma x is coming minus e by 1 minus mu a square epsilon x plus mu into epsilon y okay because due to because once uh, actually your residual stress once it is in a body once you will not release it then at that time it is either in compressive stress or uh, tensile stress if it is tensile stress then once you release it it will return back to its original position then your strain gauge will shrink so strain gauge reading will be negative but actual stress or positive what i am telling under so that's why after calculation you need to apply one negative sign over there okay these things you should keep it in mind so whatever the reading you will get from strain gauge with this generally you need to apply a negative sign after that if you will calculate the things then your final result will come like this these things you should keep it in mind okay any other questions do you have any other questions if you have any questions any query you can ask me anil bora want to ask i think something anil do you have any questions hello oh, hello sir am i audible yes you are audible so uh, this question is regarding fc aw fc aw okay flux core yeah, arc welding yeah. yes very yeah. good yeah in fc aw we use tubular tubular electrode yes tubular electrode yeah. definitely in case of yeah. tubular electrode we yeah. found that we find that uh, this area na uh, area of the electrode is actually generally minimum ah. it is circular and ah. hollow Ah. but in your lecture i found that ah. current requirement in fc aw ah. fc aw is very very higher ah. compared to your gm aw again re repeat your, again yeah. only actually your voice is little bit uh, uh, low again you repeat yeah in fc aw uh, uh, w we use the yes. low left yeah that is clear ha huh. and in that case Ah. Yeah. Uh, in that case, actually, the area of the electrode is very low. Very yes. Small. Definitely. Definitely. Compared Correct. Compared to more sol solid electrode. Yes. 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 Right. But uh, uh, in your lecture, I found ah. that uh, in FC AW, ah. current requirement is higher 
yes ah. compared to g m a w very good very good why it is ah. higher why it is like that yes 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 that is that is a very good question yeah i have i am yeah, just actually, explaining I, I am from assam engineering college okay okay i know you very yeah. well okay yeah, yeah. okay 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 <laughs> Oh, yeah, I am just telling. I am just discussing definitely. Yeah. I am just first opening this thing, then it will be very clear to you. Yeah, right. Just one thing you should keep it in mind. This is flux core arc welding. Generally, you know the uh, what it's called. Uh, two different types of uh, uh, you see. You can say this flux core arc welding is the combination of. You can say it is a combination of. You can say both GMAW. and smaw they that way you can say yeah right uh, that way you can say because in gmaw generally there is, there we use the bare electrode and smaw we use the flux which is generally outside the outside the what it's called outside the uh, uh, core core metal yeah. you can say core metal smaw generally that this is your core metal outside this thing generally we use the coating flux coating correct this thing generally use so to automate you can say to automate this but in sma uh, gmaw process generally this coating is not there in gmaw there is a bare electrode is there so due to this bare electrode generally what happens we can easily automate this uh, gmaw process but what happens SMAW process is very difficult to automate. Why SMAW process is very difficult to automate? Because due to this flux coating, flux cover, what happens if it is feeded? If it is feeded by some wire feeding me mechanism, then what happens? This flux cover can break, and what happens? This flux cover can break, and its performance of this electrode can be deteriorated. Deteriorated. so to eliminate this thing generally we can say we combine these two technology together and we try to make a uh, you can say electrode which is a consumable electrode that consumable electrode have a things which is a hollow cylinder types of things hollow cylinder types of thing this through and this hollow with in this cylinder inside generally we use inside generally we use this what it's called flux inside generally this cylinder we use flux so if you use flux inside then what happens if we use flux inside then you can say uh, you can if you just then feed this thing by using wire feeding mechanism due to this space of this uh, feeder generally your Uh, what, 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 what happens? Your electrode will not be damaged. Your electrode there can be continuous feeding of these things. Now your question is why the current value is more compared to why the current value is more in case of what it's called uh, FCAW? Why the current value plus I am writing current value I is more than the GMAW? It's a very interesting question. You see. generally one things you should keep it in mind generally we know you are also very uh, well familiar it about current density current density what is current density or you can say heat flux or you can say heat flux flux what do you mean by heat flux heat flux means heat per unit area heat per unit area heat per unit area so to get a same heat flux let us consider heat per unit area what is it heat let us consider we know that v into i divided by area area means over which area means you can say electrode diameter square that means this way you can write area is pi into r square pi r square v i by pi r square this way you can write here i am writing like let us consider this uh, what is called well pool dimension is equal to the diameter of the electrode let us consider i am just considering because generally well pool diameter also well pool width also will be depends on size of the electrode that's that way i am writing little bit it will be higher side definitely 
now to get same heat flux to get same heat flux here one things you get you can say let let us consider you want a heat flux that is your 100 and let let that that is your not 100 uh 10 to the power let us let it let let it be a heat flux value is 10 to the power 7 within this range 10 to the power 7 watt per millimeter square or meter square watt per meter square let's your heat flux require now if you use gmaw process and fcaw process here one things you can see in which case your r is more definitely your r of this gmaw process let this gmaw process r is rg i am writing whereas fcaw process r is i am writing fc correct so as fc is greater than as fc is greater than due to this hollow things fc is greater than rg that's why you can say to get same heat flux value to get same heat flux value what should be the for a if other parameter is constant let's voltage is constant let voltage is constant so what should be your i value you tell right right anil what i am yeah, telling right. under you got yeah. it yeah. so what happens to get same heat flux value heat per unit area definitely table with gmaw process got it yeah actually it is okay. not the actual area actually it is the with the yeah. area along with the flux also you can consider right yes 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 all the area you should come because well bit actually where the where the heat is generally providing that area that means well bit area you should consider that means in case of fcaw generally heat flux where the arc tip is uh touching you can say arc tip is touching that area you should consider what i am telling understand yes, okay okay thank you thank you so thank you sir thank you any other questions anyone if you have any other question you can ask me yes uh, so another question is asked by a candidate uh, so what he ask again he ask me uh, related to uh, what is called distortion measurement so he ask me sir what are the different types of distortion and how we can measure the distortion actually your question is uh, already i uh, provided a lecture on that in details so there i have already provided the, the details uh, things related to distortion measurement techniques and what are the different types of distortions are there that related things in detail i have provided uh, in a lecture then also if you want i can again uh, tell you the things little bit here i am uh, just explaining like distortion measurement things here you can see in uh, lecture number 17 itself i am showing showing actually so there you can observe that, that the distortion uh, is categorized into five six different categories uh, there i have observed, told you that there can be long distortional shrink there can be uh, what is called uh, there one another category is uh, transverse shrink case there can be angular distortion uh, like you see a little bit here i am showing then it will be more clear to you uh, like so uh, distortion generally you can say let this is a bart welding bart welding types of plate so if it is subjected to welding here welding here then you can you, you observe that Uh, after welding and shrink case you can observe that both your final shape of your uh, uh, plate is become like this little bit i i am just roughly i am drawing the things you can observe this uh, final uh, uh, geometry of the plate is like this that means initial dimension of this after welding it's become like this so some sort of you can say shrink case of the plate is taken place so this is called transverse shrink case because this is the longitudinal direct long what is longitudinal direction the direction along which the welding is 
welding speed is done or you can see welding is carried out that is called longitudinal direction and perpendicular to the weld line or welding direction is called transverse direction so that's why this is called transverse shrinkage so transverse shrinkage is this mass similarly in longitudinal direction also you can observe that there is occur some shortening of the length that is called longitudinal types of longitudinal types of shrinkage this two category apart from these things once you do the welding you can observe that <coughs> there is generally angular deformation angular deformation in the sense due to this well bit geometry generally or initially it was it was flat with the uh, plane but what happens due to this shrinkage and all the things your final shape of the plate become like this some angular deformation is taken place this is called angular types of uh, distortion how this angular distortion is taken place little bit i am explaining then it will be very clear to you let us consider this is this is the cross section of this two plate you can observe that generally the well bit shape well bit shape is looks like this well bit shape is look like this now if you consider the neutral axis of this <coughs> plate let this is the neutral axis of this plate what you can observe if you consider the neutral axis of this plate you can observe that that you see uh, on a minute i am just showing you can observe that lord the lord the uh, you can say lord the neutral axis whatever the portion of whatever the portion of uh, whatever the portion of uh, molten material is there above the neutral axis your volume of molten material is definitely uh, more correct your volume of molten material is definitely more so uh, once the once this uh, on this you can say on this uh, um, uh, well material shrink during cooling then what happens this lower the neutral axis portion of the material create some uh, what it's called create some shrinkage force create some shrinkage force which is let's f1 and above the above the uh, neutral axis that material also create some shrinkage force that is let's f2 so this shrinkage force f1 and f2 it depends on volume of material if the volume of material will be more your shrinkage force will be more definitely that's why what happens your f2 you can say at top side above neutral axis you can see that volume of your molten material is much much higher than the volume of molten material below the neutral axis that's why your f2 is you can say far far higher than f1 due to this what happens your plate subjected to some due to this shrinkage force it's subjected to some bending types of thing or angular deformation which is like this what i am telling understand so it is not uh, able to sustain to its original position or original shape it's bend like this what i am telling understand so this is another types of uh, deformation generally all this deformation can be measured by different different apart from this thing there can be buckling types of deformation buckling types of deformation or bow shape types of deformation there can be rotational types of deformation so these are the different types of deformation i have already explained in my lecture you go through that things i think you have not yet started those things uh, very carefully that's why you ask this question once you go through those things uh, very uh, carefully you will get the detail idea i explain the detail things how these things is happen my is all this deformation and all the things that related things in detail also i explain in that lecture little bit i am showing also and i am showing little bit that things once you'll see here you see uh, like uh, you can observe these things like welding induced distortion and measurement and prediction you see i have shown here so many experimental measurement techniques here around 10 different types of instrument by which you can measure this distortion so different different measuring by measuring tape uh, then a straight edge set dial gaze uh, 
uh, 3D, CMM, uh, LVDT. So these types, three, around 10 different types of measuring techniques in details I have already explained in my uh, a few lectures. So you can get all the details here and how we can predict by using finite element techniques, that related things also I discussed over there. So once you'll go through uh, that lecture, you will get the detail idea. What I'm telling, understand. So you need not to worry about these things. Then also, if you feel any further confusion, uh, then also you can ask. Generally, these Boeing types of, uh, Boeing types of, you can say, uh, deformation is occur especially for thin section. Okay, for thick section, generally, this Boeing deformation is not observed. Now, how we can eliminate all these things in details, I have explained over there. Okay, so if you have any further queries, you can ask me. Okay. Uh, excuse me. Yes. Sir. Yes. Yeah, I have just one clarification actually. In the assignment Definitely. six, Definitely. assignment six, one question was there. Assignment uh, six. Six. Yeah. In yeah. welding process, which uh. strain is responsible uh. for residual deformation? Yes, that is a very good, very good question. Assignment six. Yeah. yeah. Assignment. Six. Okay, uh, that's a very good question you ask. Uh, one thing here, uh, you should keep it in mind. Generally, I have already explained over there. Uh, generally, uh, there is a inherent stain concept I have given. That inherent stain means plastic stain. Plastic stain is the combination of, you can say, total stain minus elastic stain. That things you can recall. A little bit I am explaining, then it will be very clear to you. Here I am explaining the things by writing, then it will be very clear to you. I have already told you generally in a welding, the total stain epsilon T is equal to, you can write as epsilon plastic stain, epsilon elastic stain plus epsilon thermal stain. Correct? Now once the plate cool down, generally this thermal stain is dissipated in these two forms elastic and plastic. So what you can write, this plastic stain you can write as total stain minus elastic stain. So there I have already discussed, this total stain is responsible for deformation and the elastic stain is responsible for residual stays. Can you recall these things? And this total stain yes. is responsible for Deformation. Professor Ronil? Yeah, right. Can you recall this thing? That thing, yeah, this, yeah. and this epsilon P is called inherent stain. That means plastic stain. Plastic stain is equal to total stain minus elastic stain. So deformation part is coming due to this total stain. What I'm telling, understand? And Elast uh, due, due to this uh, elastic stain, generally residual stress is coming because residual because residual stress you can eliminate. Use uh, it's regain to its if you just uh, like how we measure by default drilling technique. How we measure if you make a hole, then what happens? Whatever the uh, distortion was there, that's generally returned back to its original position. Due to this, generally whatever the stain was there, based on that stain, generally we measure the residual. Stress. Can you recall this thing? Yeah, sir. Actually, that the, in that case, that answer should be residual elastic as well as residual plastic stain. Yeah, that way you can say. Is it like that? That way you can say. That's a total stain is the. It that not, means not both elastic. Yeah. Yes, both the both the things should be there. That means you both. can say the deformation is responsible for elastic plus plastic. These two. Both both will be combination. Yeah. Yes. This two should be there. Yeah. So yeah, what happens? Yeah, yeah I will. I'll, I'll tell my TA uh, to provide you the uh, if, uh, the marks. Mark. Mark. Uh, uh, so how many options are there? Option. Option actually first option was residual plastic strain. Second option was residual elastic strain, and third option is residual elastic and plastic strain. And yes. Last option is none of these. Yes. So your option should be third one. Third one. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I marked the second one. Yeah. 
ओके सेकंड ऑन योर मार्क्स ओके 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 रेसिडुअल इलास्टिक स्ट्रेन यस बिकॉज़ रेसिडुअल डिफॉर्मेशन इज रिस्पांसिबल फॉर टोटल स्ट्रेन ओके 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 थैंक यू any other queries any things if you have you can ask me A- apart from this live session uh, uh, you can contact with me any time actually you are always welcome to me if you have any other further queries you can directly ask me the question okay sir thank you thank you sir yeah no does uh, i have question does breathing fall under heart soldering uh breathing fall under heart soldering actually you see breathing and soldering you can say both are uh, vice versa types of things there is a boundary boundary in the sense like soldering generally once the temperature is below some uh, limit then there that that types of things generally we called as what it's called uh, uh soldering process like force 27 degree centigrade something like this generally on range we uh, generally give given if the welding is done above that temperature range then generally we call as brazing but the principle and physics you can say both the things are same for both the process both the process in the sense because this is such a process which is generally is a combination of two different phases two different phases in the sense one is called uh, liquid phase another one is called solid phase See, so this brazing and soldering is a two different combination of phase uh, what it's called a liquid and solid phase like here the circuit board is in solid phase but your filler material is in liquid phase so depending upon this temperature things you can distinguish the things like you see book is given like the, you have already written does brazing fall under hard soldering and the cut off of liquid temperature in some books is given as 450 degree centigrade that is the things that what i have told you na Je- generally there are some different types of this range of this temperature some books it's provide 450 some books it's 427 what i am telling understand so generally if it is brazing then it is better to consider as brazing process what i am telling understand not uh, soldering what i am telling understand yes. hello yes sir but the, there is a uh, difference is given as cold soldering and hot soldering yeah they are generally that Soft that soldering. sort of things i am just telling that sort of things i am telling that uh, already i have provided the detail things in my lecture also you can see generally if the temperature is 450 the, the, the uh, degree centigrade uh, range then we can consider that things as uh, that brazing as a hard soldering things that way also okay. i explain okay, so okay. you can you can consider that once you go through this lecture there also i have provided all yes. these thing but you see always see these things you should keep it in mind it is better to follow some american Uh, welding society's uh, classification rule book instead of following some what it's called uh, normal textbook because some textbook different different textbook provide different different range of these things what i am telling understand yes it is better to follow some well standard one and which is world wide uh, uh, means acceptable one okay. what i am telling understand are in the yes, yes okay sir. okay thank you thank you sir thank you. Okay thank you. I think no further queries are there. Uh if there are no further queries <coughs> already time is also up. So uh so we can I I I think we can leave. Yes okay thank you. Sir. Okay thank you so much thank you so much you can ask me actually not only here live session whatever the query whatever the things you have directly you can ask me actually what what i am telling understand directly you can mail me uh, if you want my mobile number i can provide you share my mobile number also what i am telling but this is as it is a live session 
so and as it will be uh, published so here i will not provide my uh, mobile number you can send me mail there i will provide my details any times any types of help required from my side you are always welcome okay okay so uh, rekha i think time is up 